Hello, and here are some problems, actually four questions from Newton's laws of motion. And these are problems that are given on WebAssign or the homework. And it'll help you to do the homework without much difficulty. So let's get started. Here is the, the first one coming up. So I call this important problems. And these are on Newton's laws of motion. Here is the first one. In the first one, there is a car that needs to be moved. And so Tom and John together are trying to pull this car. One is applying a force along F1. The other is applying a force along F2. And the two angles are given as 25 degrees and 12 degrees, as you can see. The mass of the car is 3,500 kilogram, and the two forces are given as 420 newtons and 380 newtons. And what we need to find is, what is the net force? What is the total force acting on this car you know because these are two vectors it's impossible to just add the two forces and also when you're asked to find the net force you need to not only find the magnitude of the force but you also need to find the angle so let's see how we can do that the most important thing here is that first you have to resolve the forces into their x and y components so that's what is shown here f1 can be resolved into its y component and its x component as you can see the x and the y and in the same way you can do that to f2 f2 is now resolved into its x component and its y component and uh, the horizontal is given and the angles are shown here. So remember that whenever you take the angle with something, that's going to become the cosine. So when you resolve this, the horizontal component is going to become F1 cosine theta one. Now, which could be shown either there or here. In the same way, the vertical component would become F1 sine theta 1. Now for F2, it's the same thing. For F2, this will become F2 cosine theta 2, which will be the same as this. And this will be F2 sine theta 2. So that's what is uh, shown here. So you have F1 cosine theta 1. F1 sine theta 1 and F2 cosine theta 1 and F2 sine theta 1. So now we need to look at the net X component. The net X both are in the same direction, both along the positive X. So we will add them up. So that will be F1 cosine theta 1 plus F2 cosine theta 2. F1 is 420 newtons times cosine of 25 plus uh, 380 cosine of 12. And when you do that math, you get 752 newtons. Of course, you've got to find the values of cosine 25 and cosine 12 and do the math. Next, we need to find the net Y component. The net Y component, as you can see, F2 sine theta 2 is up, so positive, but F1 sine theta 1 is down, so it's negative. So negative F1 sine theta 1, because it's down, plus F2 sine theta 2. And once again, you, we substitute the values of the forces and the angles. And then use the calculator to plug in the values of the sine, 
sine of 25 and sine 12, do the calculation, you get negative 98.5 Newton. So once we get the net X and the net Y, we can represent that. This is the net X, so that's net FX. This is net FY. Remember, net FY is negative. That's why I've shown it down. And it's uh, considerably smaller. So that is negative 98.5, while this is 752. Which means, and now the net is going to be the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle. And to do that, all you got to do is take the sum of the squares of these two sides and uh, take add them and take the square root. Okay? So finally, the net force would be the square root of the squares of 752 and negative 98.5, which comes out to be 759 newtons so that is the net force 759 newtons is the total of these two forces but again we do not know the angle at which it acts now to find the angle all we need is to find this angle theta and that can be done using this right angle triangle you can take the tan theta and so Theta would be tan inverse of Fy by Fx because tangent is adjacent, I'm sorry, is opposite by adjacent, okay? So when you do that math, you're going to get negative 7.46 degrees, which is 353 degrees. Let me explain that because this angle is negative 7.46. Why is it negative? Because it's below the positive x-axis. But if you take this angle, that's going to be 353. Now angles are usually represented in the counterclockwise direction. So you know that this total angle is 360. So this angle would be 360 minus the small angle and 360 minus 7.46 is uh, approximately 353 degrees. So that's how we get the answer to this question. Here we also need to find the acceleration of this car. And to find the acceleration of this car, just apply Newton's second law, which is net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So when you do that, the net force is 759 newtons that we found is equal to 3500 times A, and that gives the acceleration as 0 0.217 meter per second squared. And here is the second question. In the second question, uh, there are two paint buckets, as you can see, hanging by a massless cord. Uh, and uh, both of them have a mass of 2.6 kilograms. Let's call the buckets A and B. Initially, the buckets are at rest. And we got to find the tension in each cord. So we got to find the tension in this part and this part. Clearly, to do this problem, we need to draw a free body diagram. So in which case, you focus on one object at a time. So first, you focus on the bucket A. So we will only look at the forces that act on bucket A. Now, what are the forces that act on bucket A? Just two forces. One is the weight of the bucket acting vertically down, and the other is the tension in the string on top of the bucket which is holding it. So we need to get these two forces. These are the two forces on the top bucket. One is its weight which would be 
MAG, I call it M1G and T1. And so when you apply Newton's, Newton's law, second law, the net force is going to be T1 minus M1G because T1 is up, M1G is down. And that is the net force which should be equal to the mass of the object times acceleration. But in this case, the acceleration is zero. So when you set this right hand side to be zero, you're going to get T1 minus M1G is equal to zero, which means T1 is equal to M1G. Now, M1 is the mass of the bucket, which is 2.6 kilograms, and G is um, 9.8, which gives us 25.5 Newtons. Now remember that here we're taking G as 9.8, not negative 9.8. All right. Now, when you look at the second bucket B, there are three forces that act on this bucket. One is the tension in this part of the cord that acts up. The other is the weight of the bucket B. And the third one is the reaction of the tension in the string acting vertically down. So here you see the, you see the three forces now. T1 is the same force of tension that was here, which is acting down. And then you have its weight also down. And then we have T2 acting up. So that is to be really understood. Once again, T1 is the reaction of T1 acting in the lower string. Once you set that up, it's easy to find the net force because T2 is positive. T1 and M2G are negative. So it's going to be T2 minus T1 minus M2G is equal to M2A. But again, A is zero. So the right hand side becomes zero. And then that means T2 is T1 plus M2G. When you take it to the other side, T1 we got before is 25.5. M2 is 2.6 times 9.8. That gives 51 point, I mean 51 Newtons. So you get that as 51 Newtons. Now in the second part of this question, you're asked to find the tension if you were pulling on this string and accelerating it at a certain rate. So once again, the, the equations will be the same, except that the right hand side will not be zero, instead A will have a certain number. So if you have understood the first part, it's quite easy to understand the second part. So if the two buckets are pulled upward with an acceleration of, let's wait for that number to appear, okay, 1.40 meter per second squared, by the upward string. So you're actually applying the force on the upward string and just yanking it up, you know. Now surely in that case, the tension in both parts of the string should increase. That is uh, the practical sense. So like I said, to calculate the tension, we use the same uh, two equations that we used before, except that now you have that M1A term on the right side, which does not become zero. So it's uh, 2.6 times whatever the acceleration is. In this case, it's 1.4. So we get the total tension to be 29.1 Newtons uh, in the upper part. And then again, in the same way in the lower part, use the same equation. Uh, M2A is not zero. So remember that T1 is 29.1 because we got it here and so we use that. And then when you do the math, you will get the tension to be 58.2 Newtons. And I hope you understood this. And here is the third one. In this question, Two snow cats in Antarctica are towing a housing unit to a new location as shown in this figure. And it says that the sum of the two forces FA and FB 
this is FA, this is FB. It says the sum of the two forces are parallel to the line L. So that's a very important thing. So the net force is parallel to this line, which shows that there is no component along the x-axis, which again means that when you break these forces into the y and the x, you know, each one into the y and the x, the two x components are going to cancel out. Now, how do we know that? Again, because the question says that the net force is along the y-axis because it says it's parallel to the line L. So that's the most important thing. So to do this problem, we, of course, break these forces into its two components. So that is FA broken up into FY and FX. And then so we have FB uh, broken up into FX and FY, different colors, so you understand. And then, like I said, the two X components are going to be equal and opposite and cancel out. So this force has given us 3600. The angle is 48, which means this should be 3600 cosine 48. Why cosine? Because with whatever you take the angle is going to become the cosine because it's the adjacent side. And so that is 3600 cosine 48. This is 3600 sine 48. All right. And this force is FB, which is not given. But we know that since the angle is taken with this, that should be FB cosine 32. And this must be FB sine 32. So when we take the, the two X components, we know this is positive being to the right side. This is negative. So they should both equal zero. That means they are equal to each other. So set them equal to each other and uh, substitute the values of uh, sine 32 and sine 48, which I've done now, and then do the math. So divide both sides by 0 0.53, which gives us the value of FB. So when you divide uh, and you get 5048 newtons as the net uh, as the as fb actually fb in fact the second part asks us to find the net force so we do know that the net force along the x is zero so the sum total or the net force in this case is just going to be the sum of the y components because the x components cancelled out right so let's find the net force, which is the sum of the y components and uh, which is 3600 cosine 48 plus FB cosine 32. But we got FB as 5048. So we'll substitute that number and then we should be able to solve that. So that comes out to be 2409. And this is 4,281. When you add them up, you get 6,690 newtons, which is the net force. Here is a very important and interesting question. There are two masses uh, shown in the figure, and each are initially 1.80 meters from the ground. And then the, the pulley is frictionless, the strings do not have much mass, so the masses of the strings are negligible. And when you let go, the heavier mass, which is MB, which is 3.3 .3 kilograms, is going to go down, and MA is going to go up, right? It's going to accelerate first. Remember that the initial velocity of both of them is zero. One is going to go down, the heavier one is going to go down, the lighter one is going to go up, and then when the heavier one hits the floor, what's going to happen is the lighter one will still continue to go up. 
okay but at that point just when the heavier one hits the floor the lighter one already has a certain velocity when it reaches that point so now it becomes an object like a ball thrown vertically up so it's going to go up and because of gravity it's going to stop right so the actually the question asks us to find the total height of the lighter mass from the ground now surely it started from 1.8 meters and then when the heavier mass goes down by 1.8 the lighter one goes up by 1.8 so when the heavier one has hit the floor the lighter one is already 3.6 meters above the floor and then it goes up a little bit more now to find that part we got to find two things number one we got to find the initial acceleration of the system and so that we know the velocity just when the heavier one hits the floor that will be the initial velocity and then it'll go up and the final velocity will become zero and that's how we do this problem i'm going to do it in steps and uh, you need to pay a lot of attention to understand this. There are three parts in this question. First of all, you got to find the acceleration of the system. And to find the acceleration of the system, we have to draw the free body diagram, right? Uh, so let's draw the free body diagram. First, the forces on A. These are the two forces. One is the tension acting up and the other is the weight of the object A. So this is T A and then the weight is M A G since it's going up T A minus M A G is equal to the acceleration is up the lighter object is moving up right so that will be positive acceleration because it's going up and then you substitute the value of the mass and you get this equation 1.5 times 9.8 is 14.7 so you get that equation, right? Now let's do the same thing. Let's draw the free body diagram for object B. When you do that, once again, you have the tension and the weight. But remember that this time the object is moving down. The object is moving down, right? So when you do that, you're going to get TB and MBG, but TB is up so tb minus mbg because mbg is down is equal to negative mba why negative because the acceleration is down right that's why that negative so when you do that and substitute you're going to get the mass is 3.3 so plug in the numbers very carefully and calculate get this as uh, 32.34 and the right side is negative 3.38. So we have our two equations. So I'm just uh, just writing that equation right below this. And then you have to know that because it is the same string, TB is equal to TA. It is uh, the tension in the same string. So it is, they are equal. I just put it as TA and TB, but they are equal. So when you rewrite those equations, you're going to get T, now let me just call it T instead of TA and TB. So the first one gives T is 1.5A plus 14.7 because I took it to the right side. Second one similarly is negative 3.3A. Now that's where I made a mistake. It's going to be plus, right? It's not negative. It's going to be a plus 32.34. Okay, so I'm going to correct that. So here we go. What I'm doing is, the idea is that the left-hand sides are equal, so we should be able to put the right-hand sides equal to each other. So I'm doing that, and here I've corrected it. So you can see now that I put them equal to each other, and I corrected this sign as positive. And then I pull the A terms to one side. You have this negative 3.3A. That goes to the other side, becomes positive. And then I pull this 14.7 to the right side, it becomes negative. When I do that, I get 4.8a is equal to 17.64. And then do the math, I get the acceleration as 3.675 meter per second squared. 
So that is step number one. We just got the acceleration of the system. So what are we trying to do? We know the acceleration of the lighter mass now. And so we should be able to figure out what its velocity is when it has moved up by another 1.8 meter. Okay, what is its initial velocity? Of course it is zero. We're trying to find out what its final velocity would be. We know the displacement is 1.8 meter up because that's when this will hit the floor. And we got the acceleration. So when we use these uh, known quantities, we can find the final velocity of the lighter mass just when the heavier one hits the floor. So there are other quantities that I mentioned and then the equation is going to be bf squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta y and uh, the initial velocity is zero so that's gone and then plug in the other numbers and we will get the final velocity when you take the square root you get the final velocity as <clears throat> excuse me 3.63 meter per second so that's step number two. So now we know that when the lighter mass has moved up by another 1.8 meter, and when the heavier one has hit the floor, it's moving with that velocity. So now what happens, it becomes a freely falling object. I mean, it's going up, but its acceleration is now the acceleration due to gravity. So the initial velocity is now 3.63 meter per second. The final velocity is going to be zero because that's when it's going to stop. And we know uh, that acceleration is negative 9.8 meter per second squared because it's freely falling now and we can find delta y using pretty much the same equation. So we use the same equation as before and rearrange to find delta y in this case. Okay. So take the square of this quantity, uh, that's 13.18, and this is negative 19.6. Switch sides and get the value of delta y. You got to be a little careful when you're doing the math, but more important are the concepts that come in. So that's how much it has moved. So what is the total height of the lighter mass from the ground? It started with 1.8. And then it moved up another 1.8 and then it went up by 0.67 so which gives the uh, the total height of the lighter mass from the ground to be 4.28 meters. I hope all this makes sense and uh, good luck on understanding physics. Thank you.